Lucas Cruikshank, also known as Fred, was the first YouTube channel to hit 1 million subscribers back in 2009. I want to thank all of you guys for getting my YouTube channel to a million subscribers! If you've never seen any of the original Fred videos, well, consider yourself lucky, because I regard the Fred videos to be some of the worst content ever produced on YouTube. It perfectly summates what YouTube in 2009 was like. Instead of million dollar corporations basically owning the site like it is now, Back in the day, all it took was a stupid kid screaming into a camera with the footage sped up so the audio got chipmunked to become a huge sensation. I'm gonna be honest, I do remember actually enjoying Fred for a little bit when I first found YouTube, when I was a goddamn moron idiot 12 year old with no taste. But I quickly came to learn how polarizing Fred actually was. I originally thought that Fred was supposed to be this innocent child friendly content, especially because if you go to the Fred YouTube channel today, the description reads, I opened up the Fred channel for a bunch of cool new shows inspired by the spirit of Fred Figglehorn, including original comedy, music, game shows, and animation. It sounds so innocent. The Fred channel is completely dead at this point. There hasn't been an upload in over a year, which is probably for the best because they somehow managed to make the channel worse than when actual Fred videos were being made. Hi, I'm Jessica. One time, your mom and dad decided to go hang out, and they started touching each other, and then you popped out. The description mentions the spirit of Fred Figglehorn, so what family-friendly kiddie content makes up the spirit of Fred? <laughs> Fred is an internet video series centered on the dysfunctional six-year-old Fred Figglehorn. Fred lives with his recovering, drug-addicted, and alcoholic prostitute mother. It is implied that Fred has been the victim of child abuse, for example, being locked in a dog cage for three days. What the fuck? Kruikshank said that people either loved or hated Fred Figglehorn. Well, what a perfect subject to make a movie about then. In 2010, Fred the Movie was released to critical acclaim and adoration from fans of all ages. And by critical acclaim, I mean it was widely considered one of the worst movies of the year, and was hated by people of most ages probably including fans. This movie was about two years late, in my opinion. And then by the sounds of things, it was rushed into production for fears of Fred just being a flash in the pan, like it was. So the whole entire process of Fred the movie happened way faster than things usually do in Hollywood. Just because I was from the internet, they were like, we don't know how long this is gonna last. From my very first meeting with the production company to the movie coming out was like 10 months. That's so fast. This film was a fucking mistake from the get-go. Fred is just too simplistic and fucking annoying to successfully make the jump from YouTube video to full-length movie. Whoever thought this would be a good idea for a film needs to be kicked hard in the balls. Or oh, pussy. We're not sexist on this show. I'm not saying a movie about Fred would necessarily always be bad no matter what, but come on, let's be real. The filmmakers who would be required to make something like this worthwhile wouldn't even touch this property with a shitty, pissy, cum-covered 10-foot pole. Was anyone surprised by this film's lack of quality? I know I wasn't. And being fair, Fred the movie isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. Surprisingly enough, there are a couple of things about it I kind of like. I mean, if it made me non-ironically laugh a couple times, that has to count for something, right? But let me be clear, the bad definitely outweighs the good here. I'm just saying, for a movie about Fred Figglehorn, this probably could have been much worse. That's not to say that this film doesn't make me feel a bit sick, though. I'm just preparing you because these movies they do get worse. So enough chittering and chattering, let me introduce you to the Fred Trilogy. Starting with... Fred. The movie. The film begins with a half-screen computer window of our main character, who I'm sure you're very surprised to know, is Fred Figglehorn. Friday, 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 Friday. Who I guess is video blogging and a reference to his YouTube channel, even though later on he continuously breaks the fourth wall without it seemingly being confined to him video blogging. He just kind of talks to the audience when he feels like it. It's basically the only way the filmmakers thought they could make this fucking stupid ass character work in a movie. You'll notice his probably trademarked high pitched voice is a little bit different compared to how it was on his channel. It's crucial in our relationship because. <gasps> 
This is amazing! On his channel, the footage is simply sped up to give the illusion of a six-year-old with a high-pitched voice. Okay, well, peace out, home dad. Bye! But that would be incredibly infuriating after three seconds in a movie. So instead, they decided to... Pitch shift his voice so they can keep the funny, lull, high-pitched screaming Fred is so famous for. <laughs> oh, wow, so funny. Wee, funny, funny. He goes to school where he's not only established as being a fucking weirdo loser. Like, come on, he, he deserves to be picked on if he wants to wear suspenders and tuck his t-shirt shirt into his jeans in 2010, but he's also set up as being a creepy stalker as well. The girl he's stalking is called Judy, played by the pop star Pixie Lot, who unsurprisingly is fucking awful in her debut film. Kevin, just leave him alone! Just leave him alone! And she was never in a movie ever again. Look, the plot of this movie is not complicated. Fred wants a girlfriend. He likes Judy and wants Judy to be his girlfriend. Judy lives next door to Fred. Funny, hilarious antics ensue. If Fred's voice immediately grates on you to the point of infuriation within mere seconds, which, let me clarify, I cannot blame you for. I am burning on the dance floor. Whoa. Then these movies will basically be insufferable for you. You will not be able to finish them. But for some reason, the voice doesn't really get to me. I think annoying characters can actually be quite funny when they're done right. Maybe I've just seen so much shit at this point that I build up an immunity, kind of like a callus, on my fucking brain. When this film is at its best, it kind of reminds me of a live-action SpongeBob SquarePants. They're both weirdo losers who have annoying voices, and both have comedy that revolves around quite random, ludicrous, surreal, and physical comedy. Except the good episodes of SpongeBob have a bit more leeway because it's a cartoon, which doesn't have the restrictions of filming real-life people so it can fully embrace the weirdness. And to its credit, Spongebob actually has punchlines? You took my only food! Now I'm gonna starve! And enjoyable stories that are fun, goofy distractions for 20 minutes. You do realize quite quickly that Fred doesn't have much variety in terms of how they play him for comedy. There are two types of punchline in the Fred movie. He either screams... <laughs> or falls over. That's it. After you've heard him scream once, or get hurt once, it quickly starts to get stale. Pulling off comedy that is actually funny in a movie is not an easy thing to achieve. Ideally, you kind of want to structure it almost like an action movie. You don't want the best part of your movie to be the opening scene or first act, so then everything after it pales in comparison and leaves you wanting more of what you've already had. You don't want to blow your wad too early. You gotta drip feed just enough entertaining antics until a climax near the end that leaves you satisfied. Now, of course, when you only have two types of punchline, two types of fucking joke and such a simplistic story you can't really do that so the fred movie becomes extremely predictable not only in terms of the paper thin plot but also with how every single scene is going to conclude in terms of comedic value let me show you an example of a scene that falls completely flat in terms of comedy and isn't the least bit funny at all fred says him and judy are inseparable i'm taking things to the next level with judy we've been inseparable lately which is obviously a lie because we've already seen that she might as well not know that fred exists so fred is obviously completely deluded so I guess being deluded is funny. Then we cut to a hallway shot where Judy says she might host a party. So I was thinking of having a party this weekend. While Fred eavesdrops and gets ignored by them, then he bumps into someone and says, Ow. Ow. So what part of that is supposed to be funny, exactly? The fact that he's a huge loser who nobody likes? Why is that funny? It's just sad and a bit pathetic. There is one joke I can remember that actually has a setup and punchline, and made me laugh because I wasn't expecting it. Fred tries to get into Judy's house by concocting a plan to get over the wall in his garden, because if he tries to go to her front door, his neighbor called Kevin, who's a bully, and also happens to be Judy's girlfriend, sort of, will kick his ass. <sighs> So first he tries to use a trampoline to jump over, but that doesn't work. So instead he starts digging a hole. When he finally manages to dig a tunnel underground and emerge from the mud like a zombie, this happens. Oh my damn, I dug all the way to China! <laughs> It's not amazing or anything, and the scream is a cop-out way of ending it and securing a laugh from the eight-year-old Fred fans, but that is an actual joke, in some respect, at least. On the flip side of that, there's this fucking weird joke that's set up very early on, where Fred explains how his friend got lost in the woods when he was young, and this is the reasoning for why he's scared of the woods, whatever, makes sense. Later on, of course, he winds up in these woods, and the character who got lost in his childhood shows up and looks like a homeless person. It's me! Evan. Then Fred screams and runs away. 
And that's it. Where, where's the joke? Fred's screaming is actually justified here because this is creepy. I think I would scream like Fred if I saw this guy in the middle of the woods. It has absolutely no point and isn't funny. So why is it in this fucking movie? You could take this entire part out of the movie and not a single fucking thing would change. Right, so hold up, let's rewind a bit. The first 10 minutes of this movie are basically a painfully boring Fred YouTube video. It's intentionally edited like his videos in the scenes where he's directly addressing the camera. So already this film doesn't do itself any favors. You want your movie to feel like a movie, not a YouTube video? A significant chunk of this film are these bizarre imagination scenes, where Fred is basically daydreaming something that he thinks is happening. But once they're over, they didn't actually happen at all, and were completely pointless. Kind of like that film The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. But except here, the film isn't shot well, and these scenes aren't entertaining and serve no purpose to anything. I guess if they were funny, I could forgive them? But they just become irritating because you know nothing is actually happening in this universe to develop or advance anything. At the start of the scene where Fred is concocting his plan to basically trespass into Judy's house. We're introduced to this character called Bertha. She's probably the best thing about this movie. She's kind of like a budget Scott Pilgrim character without the sublime writing and direction of Edgar Wright. She does become relevant again later, so don't forget about her. She's, she is very important to the plot of Fred the movie. Dad, what do you think I should do? So yeah, John Cena is randomly in this movie. He plays what Fred imagines his father who abandoned him when he was young as being like. He's honestly pretty great. It's nice to see Fred being assaulted a few times, even knowing that it's not happening in this universe. And this was pre-meme as well, so it's not like this was pandering to the internet crowd. They just somehow managed to pay John Cena enough to get him to show up for a couple of hours in this trash movie. One thing I do kind of appreciate is the breakneck pace this film has. One of my biggest complaints with films in The Search for the Worst is when a boring bad film meanders and doesn't fucking go anywhere, with scenes that just never seem to fucking end. There's a scene in this movie where it seems like it's about to go into a full-on five-minute song and dance number, but it just kind of stops after 10 seconds and moves on, before it has the chance to get truly insufferable. It is kind of a backhanded compliment, but thank you for that. Something I don't appreciate, however, is the worst fucking character in any of these Fred movies. Fred's mother, who is played by this woman who is so awful it actually makes Fred look like a funny and likable character in comparison. Sorry. You're strong. <laughs> Fred, what's going on in here? Mom, I thought- She's clearly only here for a paycheck, but she's chewing the scenery to such a ridiculous extent that it becomes more annoying than Fred. It becomes more annoying than Fred. <laughs> So fast forward to the part where Fred tried to dig underground and that all failed. He decides to dress up as a woman and finally manages to get over to Judy's house where a terrible secret is revealed. Oh my damn Asian people kidnapped Judy! Okay, okay, so she wasn't actually kidnapped by Asian people. Fred is just a Fred is just a moron. She's actually just moved house. Get Judy moved! Where to? Fred's mum gives him the new address and he has a strop, like the insolent child he is. <laughs> the scene goes on for about a minute. Yep, a full minute of this. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> I know I am. I'm dragging this on as long as possible just so you know, just so you can get a tiny taste of what the fucking pain is like. Once he's jerked off and removed some of that angst, he checks where Judy lives on Google Maps so he can continue to be a creepy stalker. I wonder what Judy's house looks like. If I zoom in, I wonder if I can see her. <laughs> the themes in Fred are actually extremely strange, and in another movie could be played for a completely different effect and tone. Like, just take a second to think about this. Fred is a weird loner outcast who no one likes, gets bullied, he talks to himself and imagines people who aren't really there when he's alone, has anger issues and is clearly unstable mentally, has no father figure and was raised by an alcoholic who's also a prostitute. Oh, and he's also a stalker who is deluded to the point where he thinks the hottest person in school is his girlfriend, despite her wanting nothing to do with him. She's my girlfriend, obviously. And all of this is played for laughs, despite its dark nature? And no, this is most definitely not a dark comedy. It's a by-the-numbers American high school made for Nickelodeon family-friendly affair. Like Spongebob, for example, is also a weird, awkward loser. But he's also a cartoon sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea. So like, 
Who cares about that? We understand that it's supposed to be ridiculous. But when it comes to Fred, it's just weird and creepy. And the entire idea becomes more and more disturbing as you put the pieces together and really think about it. God, it, it, it really doesn't make me feel well. This film is just a YouTube video with somewhat of a budget. It's unbelievable. So off Fred goes to Judy's house. I don't know why he just didn't get a lift from his mum, but whatever, we have to have a movie, I guess. He tries to take the bus, but fucks up massively and gets on the wrong one. He has an incredibly weird scene with his imaginary friend. If you've endured the pain that is the Fred movie franchise. Then winds up at a water park. Bertha from earlier is there for some reason, and she buries Fred in sand, I guess. So they have something funny to put on the poster. Then he eats a fly. Mm. It's all very strange. He keeps saying, oh my gamut. Oh my gamut. Oh my gamut. It's even on the box as if it's this classic catchphrase or something. I guess it's a combination of, oh my god, and damn it. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? Oh my gamut. <laughs> The next five minutes are a couple of random, unfunny scenes that mean nothing and have no real point. Fred stumbles across this Mexican fellow who exclaims how Fred has a fucking annoying voice. It is kind of funny how this film has a little bit of self-awareness about how annoying Fred is, but then again at the same time, just acknowledging that the thing is a thing and then doing nothing clever with this newfound self-awareness isn't exactly clever. We all know that Fred is annoying. I'm craving them. Did I also mention that water is wet? He finally arrives at Susan's house because he can't be alone tonight. Oh yeah, and don't pay attention to the fact that he's holding a dog now. I completely skipped over that scene. And I'm sure whatever you're imagining in your head as to how he acquired this dog is much funnier than how it happens in the real movie. I can assure you on that one. <laughs> it must have been so hot. La, 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 la. Oh, it's another this didn't actually happen scene. Great. Do you see how repetitive and dull this gimmick gets now? You know, I'm really, I'm really not feeling very well. Talking about this film is making me feel really weird. Ugh. So Fred Gate crashes Judy's party and embarrasses himself in front of everyone. Wow. Judy basically buckles under the peer pressure of her cunt friends and continues to be the shallow bitch that she is. Everyone there finds it so awk and cringe that all these pricks pull out their 2010 iPods and record the OMG moment to post on their Facebooks and share with all their friends. Kevin goes as far as to squish some pizza or toast or something on Fred. Then Fred projectile vomits onto Judy for some reason. I guess it's just to make the scene that much more teeth gritting emoji. Maybe even with a hint of blushing with eyes wide emoji. After Fred runs out of the house, Judy follows him out and yells, Fred! 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 Fred, wait! Implying she kind of cares that she upset him, despite never acknowledging him before. What? Once poor little old Fred gets home, he's terrified to discover that his stupid puke ass has wound up in multiple cringe compilations on YouTube. Gosh, why do people even watch other people on YouTube? It's weird! It's creepy! This movie seems to understand and embrace the fact that it's shit, and a bad idea? Why else would it constantly be referencing how annoying Fred is and directly jabbing at the audience who this movie is actually aimed for? It's a shame they didn't fully embrace the contempt they clearly have for Fred fans a bit more. But I'll take what I can get, I suppose. Right, it's time for the funniest scene in the whole film. Because Fred is so upset about not being invited to Judy's party, he writes a bunch of anti-invites. I'm gonna have a party? and no one's gonna be invited. Telling all the twats from his school that they aren't invited to his rockin' party that he's gonna have. It's just such a ridiculous idea that I find it kind of amusing. Fred is filled with so much bitter hate and genuine resentment that there is something oddly satisfying about him going around getting his own idea of what revenge is. You got my message that you're not invited to my party! However, once Fred arrives at Bertha's house, things go a little bit different to how he planned. He hands her a dis invite and she's all like, I didn't think that video was funny. So Fred decides to actually invite Berta to the party for real, and they have a great time partying. It's filmed in a weirdly sexual way for some reason, and they're only recording it for the spiteful reason of making everyone jealous who was disinvited. But despite that, let's give this film credit for what they're doing here. After abandoning the shallow and cunty Judy, Fred finally realized that the companionship he was after all along was there where he least expected it. In the equally alternative character, Bertha. Man, you know what? I guess we shouldn't always judge the book by its cover. Huh, Fred? This is amazing! 
thanks for teaching me a great lesson, Fred. Boy, am I glad that this movie did end up having a, a point and a message for kids. That's actually pretty admirable. There is like 10 minutes of running time left though. I wonder if it's possible to fuck this up in some way. Oh, it was an epic fail of me not to go to Fred's. Epic fail. I was at Fred's house and we like hurled together. Won't you come in? Thank you. What? No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Everything had been set up to make sure that it would make no sense for Fred to actually wind up with Judy in the end. Not a, not a single thing about this happening makes makes any fucking sense. No, 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 no. Fred, why'd you do this, Fred? You've ruined everything you possibly could in one swift motion. Every single bit of credit I'd given you is now void. <laughs> it's now void. This movie has no point anymore. This movie's got no fucking point. There is no message. The Fred movie has no message anymore. It was right there. The message now is that if you stalk the hot girl and basically manipulate your classmates through shallow and empty means, you'll come out on top in the end. Be a terrible person. Be a fucking shallow person. That's a, that's a great thing for kids to learn. Be a selfish, shallow piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, what a great message. Oh, you know, and you remember when Fred zoomed in on the house earlier and saw that guy on the toilet? Well, right at the end, it's revealed that Fred's mum fucked him. And that's actually Fred's dad. His real dad, not John Cena. I'm not joking. Hey, I know that guy. It's Danny Gennetti. We had a date once. That was about, I don't know, 15 years ago? I'm 15. What is happening? Who wrote this? This story should have written itself. All the pieces were there. I was giving you credit, Fred the movie. I was giving you credit. It wasn't anything special, but it wouldn't have been as insulting at least. Ah, oh, God, my blood pressure. I, I can't deal with this. Ah, oh, fuck. Please, Fred. You're fucking killing me here, Fred. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, fuck no. I can't take this. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is going on? Doctor said you had a seizure. I don't know what from. He told me to ask you. So, I guess I'm in hospital. Yep. Oh god, you don't understand. I'm only a third of the way through. What's the last thing you remember? Movie. Fred. It was the movie Fred the Movie. Well, you're done watching it, so you should be okay now. No, no, you don't understand. There are two more. Two more? What, do you want to fucking die? Wait, hang on. Why don't you? YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash Ralph the Movie Maker cover the second movie for me while I recover. Are you gonna pay me? Now before we start, I have to say, I know some of you are going to watch this movie, simply because we watched it. So if you do decide to watch it, I just want to make sure you're safe about it. Please, use protection. If this movie's going to fuck you up the ass, then at least make sure it doesn't make you sick. And just remember, if you don't want to watch the Fred movie, you don't have to. I do, however. Hey, hey, it's Fred! And Daniela! And this is it! The world premiere of my brand new movie, Fred 2, Night of the Living Fred! 
By now you're probably accustomed to the awful editing, because it's funny to constantly change positions, you know? Like, you can't just say something funny. You have to constantly move around the fucking room, because it's funny. You'll be scared and scarred! Scared! By the way, despite this being called Night of the Living Fred, it has nothing to do with Night of the Living Dead. There are no zombies in this film, so I don't know why they called it Night of the Living Fred other than to work in, like, a clever pun. But it's not a clever pun, it's just Night of the Living Fred. Like, Shaun of the Dead is a funny title because it's about zombies, and Dawn rhymes with Shaun. This could easily be Night of the Living Ralph, or Night of the Living Alex, or Night of the Living- Hello, Ski! So they introduce this guy, and this guy is the antagonist of the film. Fred's assumption is that he is a vampire, so Fred has to kill him. Damn it! But I think there's something else going on with him. Something a little more... You know, I was worried you might not show up, but I'm glad you did. I have a special meal plan that I'm very excited for you to try. It's a food I'm sure you've never eaten before. Child molestery. Ariel Winter is also in this film, for absolutely no reason. <laughs> Did a guy who edits fucking wedding videos edit this film? You remember Judy, right? Judy. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Dumped her. Don't go, Fred. I'm sorry, Judy, but I can't be tied down. Here's looking at you, kid. Really topical humor, Fred. You think any kid watching this knows what Casablanca is? And even if they knew what Casablanca was, what's funny about that joke? Oh wait, hold on, the, the condom's full. See, like, this one's already full, so we gotta break out another one. Jesus, that's a lot of fucking cum. When disposing of condoms, you gotta be, oh shit, careful to make sure that, oh, easy now. Make sure that the, that Fred Figglehorn's little juices don't get everywhere. So getting back on topic, the actress who played Judy clearly had no interest in being in the sequel. Have you ever wondered why Pixie was only in the first Fred movie? Her management wouldn't let her do the other ones. So they just used the old, we broke up excuse. We broke up. They couldn't even get the actress to do this scene, just a small cameo. So instead they put this husk of a man in a wig. It's just sad. So they just recast Ariel Winter to play the same part, the love interest that isn't really the love interest, because Bertha is the love interest. And they recast her as well. Why did he have an umbrella in the daytime? I don't know if I knew I wouldn't be scared, now would I? Oh yeah, we were talking about the editing. Awful transitions and freeze frames with text. This is Talia, ding! Insert stock sound effect here, ding! And then they show the cool kid, and the cool kid has a K-hat and a me shirt. And I was pretty popular in high school. I mean, if you can't tell already, I was really popular in high school. And I always walked around with a really cool R hat, you know? I had a cool shirt that said me on it, just to show everybody how cool I was. <laughs> Uh, I made you methamphetamine in chemistry class. <laughs> All right, this movie's about to go in a really different direction. Of course, that isn't really what she said, because this movie doesn't want to offer me anything with any comedic value. But see, wouldn't that be an interesting route to go? The guy who plays Fred hates this character, and he hates that he's done this. He only did it for the money. So how about the guy who plays Fred? I think his name is Lucas? Make another Fred movie, except Fred is like a heroin addict, and he becomes like a, a, a male escort or something. Requiem for a Fred. If for all I know, maybe that's what Lucas wants to do. Maybe these awful movies aren't his fault. Maybe he had no creative input at all, and it's just the product of a bunch of talentless and soulless businessmen who want to make some really bad kids film. Maybe, in real life, he's actually pretty funny. Turns out he has a YouTube channel which he has complete creative control over. So let's take a slight detour and look at his incredibly original, talent-filled, fun, funny, let's do this again. So let's take a slight detour and look at his channel. Now watch me whip, now watch me nay nay. Now watch me whip, whip, watch me nay nay. Break your legs now! Break your legs with it! Break your legs with it! 
there's your answer. These movies are completely his fault. He either has no talent or he doesn't care. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let's try to get it to 25,000. If we get to that goal, Princess Diana will be president. Yeah. Holy shit. The weird thing is, is I don't remember filming that. I'm trying to like go back in my mind and like, what was it like to film at a grocery store while it was open and act like a psychopath? I feel like whenever I do Fred, whenever I did a video, like I just would black out. That's usually what happens to people when they go through some traumatic experience. Their brain tries to repress it, erase it from their minds. Like when I was a child, I had an uncle. And he was a nice guy. He seemed like a nice guy. Got me gifts. Took me to Chuck E. Cheese. But then one day, he took me to his car and said, Ralph, let's play the no clothes game. For every slice of Chuck E. Cheese pizza you ate, take off an article of clothing. You play whack-a-mole. Do it again. Just... Just do it on my ding-dong this time. But anyway, I repressed that, so it's totally fine. So then Fred's alcoholic mother answers the door, and it's the progressive woman. Janet! Hilda! What a fun outfit for relaxing at home. Fucking... Meryl Streep times two over here. Since your father left me, it's been up to me to raise you on my own. And believe me, I've enjoyed every minute of it. But with that comes a lot of sacrifice, and part of that sacrifice is not getting invited to a lot of parties. Yeah, it's okay. Just only do one take. It's not like her line delivery was awful or anything. Don't bother with a second take. Making movies is hard, and we gotta save time and money. Just do one take for everything, it's fine. Then the best character in the movie comes out. This cottage cheese is also wrong. Throw it out. John Cena is honestly great in this movie. God bless him for doing this. You can't see me! Yeah, I can. Alright, what do you want? Oh man, look at all that V8 and Sunny D. Yeah, have some Sunny D, dude. Sunny D is the shit. Drink that shit all the time when I'm hanging out with the ladies. In my cool R hat and B shirt. Picking up some Cherokee chicks on the trail of beers, you know what I'm saying? What is going on around here? <gasps> the girl next door. No. How oh. did I miss her? I need you to be careful of him. He's more than a music teacher. He's evil. See, these are the scenes I genuinely enjoy in this movie. When it just gets really weird and experimental, I enjoy that stuff. <laughs> See, that scene is amazing. And then we get back to this crap. The gig is up, Fred. How far into this movie are we? No way. I feel like I've been here for two fucking days. Alright, I was trying to save this till at least like 90 minutes into the movie, but I guess I can't. I can't fucking take it anymore. a vampire because they can't go in direct sunlight, they can't see their own reflection, and aside from crosses, they don't like silver- Whoa, 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 hold, hold on a second. Go back to the, the last image. I wonder why they put a picture of Adolf Hitler. This is very odd. It was a very odd choice to do that. So Fred is eavesdropping on his mom's date with Mr. Devlin, who he assumes to be 
a vampire. Meanwhile, he's actually a child molester. And his girlfriend goes to, like, spy on them by dressing up as a waitress. You look just like a girl in my class. You, you look like a kid in my class. Turn around and take off all your clothes. I don't know what's you. I guess I suck the life out of those kids, huh? <laughs> oh, no, stop. Don't suck the life out of these kids. I think he said he's gonna suck the out of the kids. Oh, God. Now these jokes are gonna start. You should keep an open mind, sir, because you might learn something from me. I can make anything taste good. Oh, yeah? What about my sock? Who, like, who's that guy? Where is he in the scene? We go from these two people talking and they just cut to this random dude, probably not even on set the day they shot that scene. And he's just like, I had a lovely time. Do you want to come in for a cup of coffee, tea, me? Sorry, Mrs. Figglehorn. Mr. Devlin likes them a little younger, you know? Young enough so that they can't tattle on you. I have some things to do tonight and tomorrow it's... <laughs> oh, no. He's a nice man, Freddy. He's very interested in you. Very interested in you. What makes you think we'd give you any of our Mr. Devlin? For the drive. I'm going to get a pint of from each of the kids. Kevin gave a pint this morning. He's given the gift of life to someone who needs it. I'm not exaggerating it, right? Like, this movie has a lot of sexual themes in it. You gotta suck his Suck his before he sucks yours. Grab his head like this. Turn his neck sideways like this. Oh my god. Please. Um. <laughs> oh my god, is he gonna hang himself? So Fred like ties himself to a thing and he goes out the window and tries to eavesdrop on Mr. Devlin and then he falls out the window and dies. And then the movie ends. Once again, this is a very odd choice by the director. I wonder why he chose to end a kid's film like this. <laughs> Your help. Well, that's no coincidence, son, because I need your help. And then for no reason, we cut to this scene. This scene has nothing to do with anything. They just wanted to throw it in the movie because they thought it was funny. They actually had Fred go out during a WWE match. I feel so bad for everyone involved in this. It's so embarrassing. Didn't even need it in the movie. It's not funny or interesting. It took over. Now I have to take him on all by myself. <sighs> First. Here goes the editor again. I'll need a cross. A really big cross. Now I'm going to do dissolves. Cause I'm an amateur. Who the fuck edited this movie? I've seen pornography edited better than this. There he is, Ned Bastille. I need a woman who's going to challenge me a little more. What, what was that? Oh, Ned. You incompetent bastard. Hey, Ned, here's today's footage. Can you edit it by tomorrow? Why, of course I can. Guess what, guys? A fan favorite is back. And his name is Durf. Durf! What are you doing here? There's a question already on the table. Oh, I'm using this cross against the vampire. This movie is like a fucking carcinogen. I can feel the, the tumor growing in my head. Oh my god. He's gonna shoot up the school. What the fuck? It's gonna be like, we need to talk about Kevin. Here we, there's another title for you. We need to talk about Fred. Don't worry, Talia. I'm here to protect you. <laughs> Fred, Fred, stop it! Fred, please help him do something. I hope it's not too late, Mom. Fred, no. I hope it's stop. not too I'm late. Sorry, everybody. Fred has serious psychological problems. What? Ah! He walked into a school with a gun filled with garlic water and shot at the entire audience. But he goes back to school the next day. No suspension, no police, no nothing. It's a flying vampire bat! <laughs> Better protect yourself with garlic! <laughs> Get away! Everyone, stop! Diesel, put that away. Everyone in my office, we're gonna play a game of musical chairs. Except I'm one of the chairs. So Mr. Devlin takes him on a tour and Fred live streams it and everyone watches in horror. Are you watching this? It's so scary. Not because they think he's a vampire, but for other reasons, you know. Then Mr. Devlin moves away, but before he does, it's revealed that he's a vampire. It's 
Here, let me get the door. Oh. Which means nothing, because the movie is over. So, this movie's bad, of course. If we're actually gonna talk about the film seriously, and talk about it as if it's a movie, it's just an irritating experience. The editing is bad, the music is bad, it attempts to spoof other horror films and just other films in general that have nothing to do with what's going on in the plot. The movie just feels so padded. There's a bunch of other side plots and shit I didn't even mention in this review, because it's so inconsequential to what's happening. Fred is irritating. This movie fails on basically every level, and the only enjoyable part was some of the random humor. There are some visual gags that I actually found kind of funny for two seconds, but then they went on longer than they had to, and they completely fuck it up. It's kind of why John Cena is the most entertaining part of the movie, because he's barely in it. I hate it when studios just throw together a bunch of shit for kids and go, eh, it's for kids. They'll like it. Like, what? <sighs> Hold on. A headache. God, this movie's giving me a headache. I can see why it made Alex sick. I'm sure I'll be okay, though. Well, I'm not paying you. It's time to make you squeal like a little pig. Come here. Ooh, come here. Fred 3 Camp Fred is the fucking worst piece of shit movie I've seen. Since Suicide Squad, I guess. I have this problem where every bad film just seems worse and worse each time, and I don't know how to properly start these introductory paragraphs anymore. Wait, I have an idea. Fred 3 Camp Fred is the worst thing in the history of anything ever. That works. I've never said that before. Because movie. So Fred 3, Camp Fred, is easily the worst of the trilogy. As is tradition, I guess, with trilogies at this point. The terribleness kind of doubles with each movie, and that's with the first Fred movie being a piece of shit still. So this film is four times worse than the first terrible Fred movie. Oh, oh god. The film opens with a completely flat and bland musical number. Today is my favorite day. The production is bad, the lyrics are bad, everything is forced, and the guy who plays Fred can no longer properly do the Fred voice, so they somehow managed to make Fred's already annoying voice even more annoying here. Water slides to Waffle Bars, traditional and Belgian. The mum character is back, and she's also somehow worse. The camp I want a pay pay boss. It's almost like none of these people care about the artistic merits of Fred 3. Camp Fred. I guess school is over for Fred, so it's time for him to go to summer camp. I don't really understand what summer camp is. I guess it's a camp you go to in summer. You Americans are just so weird. Fred is eyeing this amazing looking summer camp called Camp Superior, which by the way, was voted number one summer camp by Summer Camp Magazine, don't you know? But Fred's mother is a cheapskate, so instead sends him to camp. <sighs> I wanna pee pee. I don't really understand the joke. Can somebody explain the joke to me? Is the joke that camp, I want to pee pee, kind of sounds like camp, I want to pee pee. I, I gotta be missing something here. So, somebody call the comedy police. This, this movie's got some explaining to do. In a lot of ways, this film is the exact same as the previous two Fred flicks. The annoying YouTube video style editing is the same as it's always been. They continue to do the weird hallucination sequences, which are all in Fred's imagination. Camp Fred is basically the result of a hack writer completely running out of ideas for funny scenes he can do with a Fred character. Well, I guess we've already done the famous Fred x Judy storyline. Oh, and also done the that classic My Teacher is a Vampire Halloween special. What's left on the list of fucking boring, predictable, made-for-TV cheap ideas? Oh, I know. Let's make Fred go to camp. Summer camp. This movie's pretty much writing itself. I don't even think the guy who plays Fred, Lucas, even wanted to be in this movie. No one wanted to be in this movie. The movie didn't want to be in this movie. In fact, when I opened the Amazing Trilogy box set, which cost me like a fucking fortune, the third DVD actually tried to escape. I had to hunt it down. It was a whole thing. The only person who is into this at all is the guy who plays the bully character, Kevin who is so into playing this character that I actually find it a little bit disturbing. But man, props to him. Props to him for not being this bitch who is completely insulting to watch. The bus ride to camp 
I Wanna Pee Pee manages to make every annoying scream scene from the previous two movies seem trivial in comparison. Hearing Fred scream to the heavens for a solid 45 seconds is just a fucking piss take. It's not funny. It takes all the goodwill I had for the Fred scream, which admittedly was a small amount to begin with, and throws all of that away for basically the most lazy gag imaginable. I wonder if they've run out of ideas or not. It's a needlepoint of me needlepointing. Nice. I fucking hate every single scene in this film. I hate every single scene. Not one thing is funny. In the previous two movies, I got at least one laugh. This film right here, this film just fucking pisses me off. The made-for-TV cheap Nickelodeon vibe is the strongest in this one as well, despite it literally being a made-for-TV cheap Nickelodeon production. The first immediately distracting thing is that Fred has aged quite a bit compared to his early 2008 innocent YouTube days. He's actually a man now, so seeing this fully grown man running around in suspenders, screaming and being a fucking retard, loses a bit of his charm. And when I say charm, I mean that incredibly loosely. I could forgive this aspect in the first movie because he still looked quite young, so it didn't stand out too much. But when he's sat next to literal children, it really does stand out. Insufferable scene after insufferable scene where nothing fucking happens finally leads us to the introduction of the supporting characters in Fred 3. Camp fucking Fred. Meet nerd. He's a nerd. Meet fat. He's fat and he never talks. Well, that's chatter. Don't mind him, he never talks. Meet Asian. She eats all the time. That's her character. That one over there is Spoon. She's always eating. And I mean, always. Hola. And also meet oddly serious token black kid. Last but not least, there's What's up? Why do they call you <laughs> This cast of characters could not be more cookie cutter, lazy, predictable, uninteresting, boring, flat, pathetic, or calculated. Even if they fucking tried. Hey. What's the story of this movie? We're 12 minutes in and I have no idea what this movie is about, except that Fred has gone to summer camp. Well, it is. Is anything gonna happen? Unlike the previous movies, this film has scenes that just don't fucking end. The cafeteria scene lasts like five minutes, doesn't have a single funny joke, and has basically no point at all, except to very obviously and blatantly establish these oddly specific character traits. Which I wonder if they'll come into play later on. Duh. I'd like to note that not only is there a burp joke, but there's also a fart joke in the exact same scene. <laughs> Somehow Fred the movie, and even Fred 2 Night of the Living Fred, managed to avoid the easy to abuse fart and burp joke. <laughs> Oh, sorry guys, the food I ate at the hospital has been driving my intestines insane. Uh, better out than in, as I always say. Please laugh at me. Fred tries to escape the camp because he hates it so much, but heavily armed soldiers stop him from leaving. Why don't you just pull the fucking trigger and end this shit, please? And then I guess the soldiers kill him and put him into the food, and the Asian girl finds a severed finger in her gruel, and it turns out Fred is actually fucking dead. Thank God. Is this movie over? Oh, Mom, I had the most horrible nightmare. I dreamt you sent me to the worst summer camp ever, and also I had this weird sped-up chipmunk voice that got really annoying after a while. Oh, just fuck off. Fuck off. John Cena comes out of a fridge again, and again, he's the only entertaining aspect. His screen time in this movie is cut by about three quarters. He's only in this one single scene. What does that tell <laughs> you? There's this strangely intimate scene that comes out of nowhere where Lucas Cruikshank starts weeping. Probably because he remembered that he's the lead star in Fred 3. Camp Fred. I'm only kidding, of course. It's only the most predictable gag of all time. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Fred has this, like, completely dumb, unfounded idea that the camp workers are poisoning the kids and feeding them to a giant rat creature? Yeah, Fred's a fucking moron. Obviously, it turns out that every part of his theory is completely wrong, and all that's going on is that the other kids have a secret base where they eat junk food. That's the big reveal. What an amazing surprise. Can this movie be over now, yeah? <laughs>
Wait, no, 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 no. No, no, no. What, what do you mean this movie still has 40 minutes left? What the hell is even left to happen? What could even happen now? This, this film's concluded. Out of nowhere, this film just suddenly turns into a competition called the Summer Camp Games, where Kevin the bully shows up with his crew of fucking 40-year-olds to compete against children for 20 fucking minutes. It's just scene after scene of games that would be boring to do in real life, let alone watch in a movie. Camp I Wanna Pee Pee starts off by losing, but then they win because the Asian girl who always eats, eats a pie, and the fat one sings a song really well. Camp, I wanna pee -pee. Then Fred has a musical number about how he's a loser. I'm not even joking, that's literally what he sings about. He sings about how he's a massive fucking loser. For the loser sing it all. Then the film wraps up all nicely with a little bow on top and everyone goes home. And the general public never has to see anything Fred related ever again because I guess this thing flopped, hopefully. Everyone hated it. Channel's dead. Fred is dead. Fred is dead. If I was being interrogated by someone who was asking me about the plots of these three Fred movies and I had to think on my feet to actually remember what happens in them, I would really, really struggle to recall anything that happens in this fucking bullshit film because it's so meandering and meaningless. Fred the movie is about a loser who's trying to get his hot neighbor to be his girlfriend. Simple. Fred 2 is a Halloween themed adventure about Fred suspecting that his music teacher is a vampire and he has to try to defeat him. Simple. Fred 3 is about... Uh... He goes to, to summer camp, there's like a dead body, but it's not a dead body, it, it's pizza. And the film randomly changes into a team camp challenge thing. I can tell you, it's just such a mess. The third movie is definitely the fucking worst. None of them are good movies, and I wouldn't recommend them to anyone in any situation. The editing is bad in all of them, the direction is bad in all of them, the acting is bad in all of them, the cinematography is flat and filmed like a cheap TV movie, which they all basically are. Everything even remotely creative means nothing in the universe because they are effectively dream sequences. It's basically from beginning to end, a miserable time all round. I guess the biggest problem is that this was just a terrible idea to begin with. Let me tell you a story. A long time ago when I first got an iPod Touch with a camera on it, I recorded a video of myself playing a character somewhat similar to Fred. My character was called Pisser Dick. He was an American with a thick Texan accent. He wore a giant sombrero for some reason and he reviewed We Fit in a funny voice and he swore a lot. If I still had the footage, I would show it to you. Except luckily I had the gumption to realize how fucking awful it was a long time ago. And I deleted it so no one would ever see the fucking embarrassing crap it was. These Fred movies are about as good an idea as a pisser dick movie would be. It's the problem with these internet ideas that seem funny when you're like 12 and just need to stay on YouTube. They belong on YouTube. Fred was lucky. He got a ton of attention from his stupid little videos and that attention garnered the eyes of greedy corporate suits who thought they could get ahead of the curve and start making movies about internet celebrities without actually stopping and thinking for a second about how bad an idea that is. I genuinely do hope that Lucas Cruikshank made his money from this shit while he had the chance, but these movies are fucking trash. After this video is over, I don't expect anyone to ever talk about or mention them again. They're just forgettable garbage. Mind you though, mind you, these movies did confirm something for me. While the Fred trilogy is fucking awful, none of them, not one of them, holds a candle to the fucking pure misery that is the Smosh movie, which is honestly one of the biggest pieces of shit. I've ever seen. The Fred movie, the first one, is actually masterful in comparison to the Smosh movie. I would be pretty fucking embarrassed if I was Smosh, because even when the movie based on fucking Fred Figglehorn is better than yours, well, you really fucked up pretty bad, didn't you boys? I'd like to thank Ralph the Movie Maker for helping me through this video by taking care of the second film. I did watch that movie myself, of course. I agree with every word Ralph said. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. There will be a link at the end, annotations in the description, and on the card in the top right corner if you press the little I button thing. He makes amazing movie reviews. They're so funny, and he deserves way more subscribers than he has. So please go send him some support. Go watch his videos. They're genuinely great. Leave him a ton of comments thanking him for sharing the load but n not in a sexual way that was a reference to lord of the rings we didn't share loads if you are interested in hearing my exact thoughts on fred 2 specifically you can also check out the trying to watch for this video when that goes up in a couple days so as always thanks for watching subscribe to ralph the movie maker all comments and ratings are very much appreciated why don't you tell me in the comments which film looks the worst to you out of the trilogy and don't worry i haven't forgotten about the wheel that tells you which movie's coming next i'm gonna keep the next search for the worst a secret 
to surprise you all again. I'll see you next time. Bye!